I'm Sarah. Welcome back to my channel where I talk about my journey to sustainable health and meaningful success. If you're coming back and you've already subscribed, welcome back. Y'all are my people and I love you so much. And if you're new here and you haven't subscribed yet, I hope that you'll consider doing so by the end of this video. Today I'm going to be talking about all the books that I read in the Amway LTD system when I was in Amway for two and a half years. I don't consider my channel to be an anti-MLM channel, but I do have a playlist on my channel if you would like to go there and see my Amway story. But right now, in this season in my life, I am just processing through everything that went on in Amway, and I realize that there's a lot of lies even being out of Amway, I continue to discover from other people who have left that particular group that I was in, I continue to discover more truth and realize how much deception was involved in that entire experience. So now <laughs> I don't want to throw out the baby with the bathwater with all of the good success principles that I learned. So I am just in a stage of sorting through what was good, what I could take away from that experience, but also understanding the negative that came from those experiences and just being able to discern what I should keep and what I should throw away from my Amway experience. I think a lot that draws people to MLMs, multi-level marketing companies, um, and with my particular group, there was a heavy emphasis on mentorship. And something that was just really appealing to people was the fact that they had a particular curriculum in place that had books specifically designed to help people grow in their ability to communicate with people, grow their self image, grow their success mindset, their business mindset. So there was a lot of really positive information that was being shared. So I'm just gonna go through all the books and if you have any questions or comments, please comment them down below. I will have the full list with the authors listed in the description below. So if I go too fast, forgive me and just check it out in the description. Um, they'll all be listed there. So to start off, the first book that they gave me in the Amway process was The Business of the 21st Century. It was written by Robert Kiyosaki and basically it explained the logic and the structure of a multi-level marketing business, but it was written by someone who was really successful in business but had never actually built a network marketing business. So the second book that I read was Prosumer Power 2, and it was all about consuming your own products. And as a business owner, you do that. You support your own business. But in a multi-level marketing sense, <laughs> it was misused information to kind of further feed the pyramid scheme, purchasing of your own products and not actually selling retail. So... It was good information, but it was misused in this context. It's The Greatest Miracle in the World by Og Mandino. And I've talked about this book before. It is an excellent self-image book, especially if you're a spiritual person. And this was the book that really solidified my desire to hang out more with these people because I think that they believed in me and... I thought that they believed in me and I thought that they were going to help me build myself to my potential. The Go-Giver was another book that they gave recruits um, before they actually signed them on to business. It emphasizes the important, uh, importance of connecting and networking, but obviously it's misconstrued to connect your recruits to your upline and so that's how they connected this book to network marketing. But in general, this is an excellent success principle um, of being able to network. And it's not about what you know, it's about who you know. And this, this book really does reinforce that. An Enterprising Life is an autobiography by Jay Van Andel. And it 
basically tells the history of Amway and it glorifies Amway's founding. Compassionate Capitalism by Rich DeVos emphasizes the importance and the benefit of being able to start your own business and how empowering it can be for people who come from um, an underprivileged background, but it leaves out how many people are harmed in a pyramid scheme. Live the Dream, No More Excuses by Larry Winters. Larry Winters was my upline diamond. Um, no, he's my upline double diamond. So, um, yeah, it's a rags to riches story written by him. It's his autobiography, but, you know, rags to riches, but at what cost? The Pursuit by Dexter Yeager. Um, again, Dexter Yeager was a really high up person in the Amway business. And this book told of his success stories, but again, at what cost? So skill with people is very abbreviated it's bullet pointed and it's just like I think it's his top 10 tips Les Giblin's top 10 tips or something for interacting with people really short read but then he wrote how to have confidence and power with dealing with in dealing with people um, and that's another really good one that um, talks about how to influence people how I Raised Myself from Failure to Success in Selling, um, obviously by the title, it's really good with talking about sales, but I think it's good for anybody who's trying to convince anyone of anything. It's just a good, it's a good way to sell yourself, to brand yourself, to um, be able to talk to other people about a thing that you want them to believe in just as much as you do. How to Win Friends and Influence People is a classic by Dale Carnegie, and um, it's really good. I have nothing bad to say about this book. I really loved it. It helped me in a lot of work situations. Obviously, with Amway, it turned into more of a... It was more of a situation of how to lose friends and manipulate people, so I don't know. Um, but the book itself was really helpful. Bringing Out the Best in People was a great book uh, if you're already leading a group. I didn't really get a lot out of it because I didn't have any sort of team, so I didn't even really know what to connect it to, but um, if you have any sort of group leadership, this would be a good book to study. Dynamic People Skills by Dexter Yeager. Um, I didn't read this book. Actually, this was recommended to me by my upline. Dexter Yeager is... Well, um, he recently passed away, but he was a very higher up in the Amway business. Um, so I don't know. He probably has great things to say about people skills, but I didn't read it. And the last book in the people skills category is Wired That Way. It is a personality book. It's very helpful and informative regarding different types of people and how to interact with them or what their strengths and weaknesses generally are. But like any personality type um, theory, it runs the risk of limiting people or putting people in boxes or putting a label on someone. So Wired That Way in and of itself is really informative. The next category of um, books that they had us read was Success Mindset and like success mentality. So the first thing is Think and Grow Rich, which obviously, like the title, it's you basically, your thoughts determine the amount of success you're going to have. The magic of thinking big just encourages you to not have limits on your dreams and to always think positive and that action cures fear. So just go for it and don't worry about the kind of mistakes that you're going to make. Just do it and don't think small. What to say when you talk to yourself. It sounds like a funny title, but it does emphasize the importance of your self dialogue. And I think that that's really it really is important. Um, it was misused in the Amway um, scenario and by my upline because any problem that I came to them with, they basically just told me that the way to solve it was by changing how I talked to myself about it. So any health issue, any financial issue, any relationship issue, my upline basically said, well, 
what's what are your affirmations and what are you telling yourself about this situation like you shouldn't say that you have health problems like you should be speaking well over yourself which i agree but your self-dialogue doesn't solve actual tangible problems that you should be taking action on so that was abused but what to say when you talk to yourself does resonate with changing your self dialogue so that you stop sabotaging yourself by just the negative things that you subconsciously tell yourself um, about any given situation start with why by simon sinek was one of my favorite books that I read because it emphasizes the importance of knowing why you do what you do. Anything that you put a considerable amount of time to, you should know why you're doing it. But Acres of Diamonds is very much that you already have everything that you need to succeed. The Master Key to Riches by Napoleon Hill is another great mindset book. The 12 Week Year is an incredible book I think for achieving personal or business team goals if you are planning out your quarter or you're planning out your your business year the 12 week year really helped me map out my goals in a more manageable amount of time and so it's like take 12 weeks and plan that out to accomplish your goal as opposed to trying to take an entire year because you think that you have so much time when you really don't. Whereas 12 weeks, you can really focus and accomplish a lot more in a shorter period of time. So that was a really, a really key book that I, I enjoyed. The Go-Getter is another book about not stopping no matter how many times you are rejected. The Compound Effect was my absolute favorite book. And that is all about habits. The compound effect is a small, steady, consistent action taken over a long period of time will produce great results. Wooden on Leadership is written by John Wooden, the UCLA coach who coached the basketball team through 12 consecutive NCAA championships. And this book is really great for personal, like leading yourself and leading others. The next portion of books that I'm going to get into is highly religious and it's the section of books that was most misused and the kind of books that I might have to revisit in the future or just scrap altogether depending on whether or not I want to actually focus that in my life. So the first book that they had me read was, I am missing the cover but it's called The Ten Critical Laws of Relationship. It covers the mentorship relationships in the Bible, a lot of like biblical mentorship relationships. And um, it's like Elijah and Elisha and there's other ones. But it talks about being a protege to a mentor rather than being a prodigal, being someone who's going to leech off of someone just for the sake of benefiting themselves. But it was so misused in this Amway Corporation, or not just in Amway, but in the group that I was in specifically, because um, it just further enforced why we should worship our upline. And basically, we should just submit entirely to our upline without any questions, because we don't want to be a prodigal. We want to be their protege, and we want to just follow their every move and it it was so unhealthy and it, it reinforced the cult-like environment of the business group that I was in. So The Bait of Satan is all about unforgiveness and the poison that it could be in our lives. It is probably the book that I most need to read in this season of my life. But it was also given to me by my upline Platinum when I was upset with him about something. And I don't remember what I was upset with him about. I just remember that it, I, was, I was right to be upset. But instead of him really apologizing and just letting the matter move on, he suggested that I read a book about unforgiveness and how unforgiveness is the bait of Satan. It just ended up 
reinforcing again my silence uh, toward the abuses of my upline. Honor's Reward by John Bevere, all about seeking God's plan for your life. I think the subtext is how to attract God's favor and blessing. Um, I think my upline pretty much just used this to say you need to honor your upline and that's how God's going to bless you. The manipulation continues. The dream giver. Ugh! I cringe at this book not because of the contents of the book. The book is about fulfilling your God-given purpose and not letting anybody say anything to take you away from what you're supposed to do. And if God gives you a vision or a dream of something that you got to do, you got to trust the God who gave you the dream rather than the people who are just going to be naysayers and try to stand in your way. Great concept. Oh my gosh, it nearly ruined my relationship with my brother. Uh, I can't even tell you because basically they use this book and they pit you against anybody who says anything doubtful or who express any sort of concerns about the Amway business. They use this book and say, well, God gave you a dream and now, um, you know, so-and-so is standing in your way. So are they a border bully or are they a, you know, I don't even know what the terms are in the, in the book, but it's like, they basically accuse everybody who expresses any sort of doubt as one of the people in this book that's trying to keep you from your God-given purpose. Beware. Beware of religious cultism within the Amway business. Please. I read Love, The Secret to Your Success by Gloria Copeland. I don't remember anything about it, honestly. Um, to Know Him by Gloria Copeland was a great book to just lay a foundation for a relationship with God. I don't really remember much about that one either. It was it was very foundational, though, for um, just starting a relationship with God in a Christian sense. The Laws of Prosperity by Kenneth Copeland. And at this point, we all collectively say, whoop, there it is. <laughs> The prosperity gospel preached in an Amway setting. Here we are. I have no words, but I have so many words. Ugh. They also had me read This Present Darkness by Frank E. Peretti, but it is all about spiritual warfare. And um, I just find that interesting that that's coming from my upline. I'm not at liberty to say anybody else's stories other than my own. But in terms of spiritual warfare, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. These words are brought to mind. Interesting. I also read the book Captivating, um, it's specifically geared toward woman, women. Um, they also have the men read the, the other book, Wild at Heart. It speaks to like our nature as women or our nature as men. And Captivating did help me work through a lot of issues. I don't know if it applies to all women. I don't know. But it seemed to apply to me at the time. And the final book that they had me read was Live the Let Go Life by Joseph Prince. I've already talked about this, but it basically was let go and let God. I definitely disagree with the premise of the book as that was presented. So maybe in a different context, I would feel the same way, but I really doubt it. So, meh. You know, because I had been an active reader before business and then when I got into business for two and a half years, I read nothing unless it was handed to me by my upline. Um, and well, recommended to me by, by, by my upline. I obviously had to purchase the books through the leadership team de development website so that all my money would be going to leadership team development. But that's a different story.
covered in the radio show that I will link in the description because that happened this last Saturday night. So check that out. But anyway, <laughs> um, so the first book that I grabbed off the shelf at Barnes and Noble, um, I'm not going to mention the title because um, I'm just not going to, but this is the book that I read. <laughs> um, the first second I left Amway. I think it had some really interesting principles. It had different philosophy than I was used to reading. So I was like, definitely soaking that in. I don't agree with the majority of what he said. Um, but I think that it definitely opened my mind to start seeing suffering a little bit differently and start accepting the world for what it is and starting to live with myself and accepting myself for who I am now and not putting so much pressure on something that I don't even know is going to happen in the future, which is the future itself. So to live more in the present and to be able to deal better with myself more in the present. So that was a benefit from this book, but yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend, <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily recommend this to anybody, but that was how I was feeling when I left Amway. <laughs> um, the next, <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah, I really went off the reservation when, <laughs> when I left Amway. So the next couple of books after that was the story of Shannon Rose, part one and part two. Um, yeah, so Shannon Rose is a former porn star and now a YouTube vlogger. Um, is it needlessly vulgar? Yes. But, um, I did find a lot of redemption in this book because of the fact that she came from such an extreme and negative background. Um, she went through a lot of tra trauma in her childhood. Then she took a lot of life roads that many people would look down on and see as immoral or just, you know straight up shun her and think that she was disgusting. But then she ended up turning her life completely around. And I don't know whether or not she regrets those life decisions, but just how she worked through those issues and how she came to the life that she's living now, to me, was very inspiring. The next book that I read was Ecclesiastes. It's a very sharp turn from ex-porn star to a book that you can find in the Bible. Um, but I did read the whole book of Ecclesiastes. It's written by King Solomon of Israel. Um, he was a very wise king and he was also very wealthy. So we went on this whole journey to find what the meaning of life is and the things that he wrote were just so relatable <laughs> and so applicable to the things that I think a lot of people go through that challenge of you know, what's my purpose? What, what am I supposed to do with this world? I mean, or what am I supposed to do with my life? Is everything meanless, meaningless? And just, if you've ever questioned that, um, Amway might find you and exploit you for that kind of <laughs> vulnerability. But <laughs> the book of Ecclesiastes does give so much peace about finding success and finding fulfillment and joy in your life. Um, and so that was, it was very calming to me. Um, I mean, basically the end of the matter is it doesn't matter what you do as long as you glorify God with what you do, um, you're a success. So that's how I've developed, um, part of the reason why I've developed my theory on, for me, Meaningful success is living every day in love, joy, and peace. Today is all that I have. Today is all I'm working with. It doesn't really matter what happened in the past. There's nothing that I can do about the future. But today, I can choose to live in a contented, God-honoring way. And that's, that's how I choose to define success for my life. And I think that that stemmed with the book of Ecclesiastes. The next book that I read was The Six Minute Diary. It is a diary, but the front like third of the book 
is actually a book and it's written about gratitude and really helpful to just understand the psychology and how it affects our mindset when we choose to be grateful every morning and every evening um, and just live in a, in a mindset of gratitude. Uh, it's a far cry from the Amway way of thinking where you're continuously speaking what you don't have and hoping to manifest what you don't have, um, but rather just being able to reflect and meditate on the good things that you have in your life now, um, it, it ends up being a much more contented way of life, in my opinion. The next book that I read after leaving Amway was Vlog Like a Boss by Amy, Amy Schmidtauer. I think that's how you say her last name. Um, Amy is very inspirational to me. I watch her channel pretty religiously. If there's anything that I do religiously, it's probably watch Amy Landino um, or Amy Schmidtauer as she's um, called on this book. I think that's her maiden name. Um, yeah, she's the person who gave me the courage to start this vlog in the first place. I also read the book Keep Going. Um, it is specifically geared toward artists who struggle to continuously keep the creative flow in their minds. And this is 10 ways to keep the artistic mindset flowing. I did finish Mere Christianity. It was just really helpful in terms of getting a basis of Christianity and what their beliefs are without actually having to use the Bible as an evidentiary support. Currently, I'm reading A Christian Walks in the Footsteps of the Buddha, still really learning and growing from a cross-cultural um, perspective on religion, God, spirituality, and the meaning of life, and also how to deal with suffering. So it's, it's working out so far. And the next book that I'm going to be talking, not talking about, but the next book that I'm going to be reading is um, Good Morning, Good Life by my girl, Amy Landino. Of course, she writes two books. I read two books. This is how it goes. So that was like 43 books that I just covered. And I hope that some of it was helpful, at least. Um, I think that it is important to be able to discern what was truth from this very incredibly negative experience that I had with Amway and with my upline. Um, I think that there's a lot of growth that I can do by even rereading these books with a different mindset and not thinking about how it's going to help me make my Amway business work. Um, but I just think that I have a much better shot at succeeding in anything that I do when I'm surrounded by good, honest people who support me, who actually care about me, and who don't just put on a false front or a facade of success while their finances, their marriages, and their families are suffering. I mean, I just, I just think that surrounding myself with genuine people like you all is so much better. It's so much more fulfilling and I am so excited <laughs> to be able to continue this journey toward meaningful success with you all because y'all are the realest. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a like if you wanna. And if you haven't already subscribed, subscribe, please. <laughs> please do that. Um, and, and, and yeah, it, it'll be a good time. Next week, it's going to be fun because it's going to be the day before Valentine's and I have something spe special planned for you, my loves. So anyway, just, okay. <laughs>